Hi and welcome to DCO. My name is David Gopetti and in this video I'll be sharing with you how I created the script for this building that has random forms that has subtractions for the doors and then other subtractions for the windows and ventilation. I'll be sharing with you all of the steps in detail and my goal is to show you some techniques and exercises that can help you understand how parametric design works and how it, you can use them for your designs. Now the cool thing about this specific script is that we can use the slider to change how many points, the size of them, and just get different iterations depending on what outcome we see that we like. So thank you very much for being here. I post videos like these every week where I share with you exercises and techniques that can help you understand how parametric design works and how you can use them for your projects. So with that being said, thank you very much for being here and let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. We're starting with the new Rhino file. We have it at units of feet. And then I have a brand new grasshopper file here. So we can go to file, new document. And with this new document, we'll start our design. The first component we'll bring in is going to be a rectangle. So we'll start here by double clicking. We'll start typing in rectangle and we'll be using this rectangle on a plane. Now we can input the location for the plane and change the size for the X and Y. So I'll go to 150 and have two sliders for the overall size. This is to give us a region where we can set a number of points that are going to be random. So we'll go here to rectangle, then populate. So we'll go here to set or vector grid, populate 2D. This will let us populate a set of points within a region, which is going to be the rectangle. Now we can change the count size. So we'll go here to 15. And so we have the ability to create a random set of points within this region. We can increase or decrease the number of points. So this is going to be how many objects we create. So this is going to, we can right click here and change for X. I like to do caps, X size, Y size. And the reason why we would change the names is so we know what they change. And I right click here. And then it says number slider. We can change it right away to X size. So now we can change it, change the proportions. And notice that when we move this around, the points re-populate and change to a different location. So that's something to keep in mind um, because let's say you have a static design that you just want to scale up. If we were to change the size of our region, we know that our design is going to change to match that. So we would actually take a different approach and scale it. Uh, but with this, now we can move forward and we can change here for number of points. Next, what we're going to do is create a rectangle at the where these points are located. So we'll go here to rectangle once again, and we can use this population of points as the plane input for our rectangle. Now let's change the X and Y size for the rectangle. So we'll go here to 15 and change, create two sliders. So from zero to hundred sets it at 15. And so we've created a set of boxes that are all the same dimension in the X and Y that we can create here. Now notice that it's not centered. So what happens is we do, if we want to center them, we do need to either create this with a domain of negative 33 and then go to positive 33 or minus 15 and positive 15, or the way that I like to do it is by moving it. Now these are two different ways of rearranging this to be in the center but we're going to be moving this rec all of these rectangles in which direction? Well, we'll do a vector because we need to move it in a specific direction. 
but we see that we have the x value is 33 so we'll go to 33 for the x and 34 is going to be for the y so now if we plug this in here well it's going to move it further away rather than to the center so what we need to do is take this vector that's moving it the same amount and do a negative this way it goes in the opposite direction but we also need to divide this by two so notice that we all we did was move it from this corner this corner to this corner now that we have that vector we can do a division by two this way we have this vector that is whatever values they are divided by two in the opposite direction and that will let us center those rectangles or boxes within that point this way we have this being symmetrical rather than having a box be shifted to one side so all of the boxes are now the exact same size and this is okay but what we want is we want random sized boxes within a specific range so what we're going to do is replace these two now we're going to bring in a random component this way we can create a range of numbers so we'll go from Fifteen, thirty. We'll just say fifteen to thirty, and we need to construct this domain. That is going to be the range of numbers within where we create the random points. So that's going to be the range of numbers that we where we want the points. How many of these? Well, we know we have our number of points here. And seed is going to be randomized options. So I'll go here to three, bring it back to zero. So it has a seed of two. So now we can plug this into the X, but we know that this X goes to this X and this Y goes to this Y. So here's a technique so you can you don't have to unplug them completely you double click on the output and that creates a relay which is the ability to take this into two different inputs but only have one input so now we can take this delete it and plug in the random numbers so these are the random numbers that are going to be created in the x direction and now we're going to set random points in the y direction. So taking this one away, delete, and plugging in the random points. So now it's creating a set of random size boxes within the point and it's centering them. So if we increase on one side or decrease on the other, this is where we're able to have a varying sizes both in the x and y and we can increase the number of points and create more so let's go here to 30 let's increase size in the x and in the y and in the x and in the y so they're overlapping so at this point what we've done is created rectangle with points the points create a set of rectangles that are randomly sized in the x and y using these random components that come into the size of the x y and this shifts that back to the center so now let's go back to our rectangles here now we're going to extrude them so there's something called box height box rectangle and it's going to be all of these rectangles can be plugged in and now we can give it a height so we'll go to rectangle here and the height is going to be 15.5 let's go here like this
and notice that they're all extruding up by the exact same amount. So what can we do for it to be random? Well, we can do the same thing that we did before, which is come back here, have a range of numbers within where you want the height to be, and set a random, random set of numbers um, here. So I'll copy this, because I can reuse these random numbers and plug those into the height. Now let's see here. What's happening is that there's 50 and 53, so there's only there's a very small change. So now when I change this down to 15, now you see that there are some random heights going on here. And this is the this is what I wanted to show you is how we can create these intricate box extrusions and designs using random numbers and random extrusions to create a pavilion that is fully parametric. And that's one of the things that I want to teach everyone is how to use this tool to create um, outcomes that are could be very simple in terms of overall design, but can be developed further to create uh, an architectural piece that is very intricate and would be difficult to create because when we 3D model, creating a random set of points, that's one already a challenge, um, and then setting random sizes for boxes that's another challenge and then for the height so this lets us take care of most of these things within um, this script here so let's move on let's take this and now let's put it all together i'll be disabling the preview on everything except for the boxes now we'll go here to Solid Union. Disable the preview. And at the bottom here, actually create some cool patterns. Let's say if we were doing um, some kind of flooring that goes with the design, we can take some of those creases and explode them and use those individual surfaces. But for this exercise, I'll show you this other technique, which is to remove these creases, we need to go to region, no, merge all coplanar faces. So merge faces will remove those. So if I disable the preview on this, you'll see that there are no creases at the bottom, except for that original rectangle that we created. For this next portion, we're going to be creating the openings on the inside or the design so you can access the interior spaces. The next set of steps that we're going to take is going back to our rectangles when they were scaled or they are here on the ground. So first thing we need to do is take these, which it doesn't look like it's a rectangle because we moved them but we need to offset them. So we'll go to offset curve. Let's do it again. Offset curve. We'll take all of those and offset them. Now notice that when I pick the original and then I pick the offset, it's offsetting to the outside. So the distance of one is to the outside. We need to create a negative value that we plugging us a distance so it, op it offsets on the opposite direction. So I'll go to 1.50, and here we can see that it offsets to the inside, which is what we want. So now that we've offset this to the inside by this amount, this is going to be our wall depth. I'll share something a little bit later about using the seed where we can change the design, but for now, let's continue developing the, the wall. So now we've created the offset. Notice that they're still overlapping. That's fine. We're going to take these and we're going to extrude them or use rectangle height. So I'll go here, tap Alt, create a quick copy. Now we can use this rectangle as the input, use preview, and notice that it's actually not extruding it correctly because these are grafted. So we need to right click here, go to flatten. So they come in as one long list. 
but notice that they are the exact same height. So we need to bring this height down by a specific amount. So these random numbers that we use as a height work, but we need to subtract the wall depth. So that way we have a ceiling that's the same size as the wall depth. We can change that also. So we can go to minus and create You just go to minus sign to subtraction. We're going to subtract from the random numbers whatever amount this is. So we'll go to random. Notice that we have 30 values as we have 30 points. The first value is 41.9. So if I go 41.9 minus We'll call this roof depth. We'll go to two. So what happens is whatever numbers come in here get subtracted by two and the result is going to be 39.8 rather than 41.9. 39.9. So with this, now we can use this as the input for the height. And notice that it won't cover all the way to the top and we can change the depth so if it's going to be three feet for the roof depth and 1.5 feet for the walls now we can bring this together using boolean union so we'll go to union The reason why I do this is it's easier to have this as a solid and then subtract from the overall rather than have a bunch of small boxes subtract from the overall. So we'll disable the preview. Then we'll take this and subtract from the outside form. So the offsets and extrusions that are a little bit smaller will be subtracted using difference, solid difference. And now we can plug in the outside, SA, which we want to keep. And we want to take this box or these extrusions that are offset to the inside as B reps B, which means that it's subtracted from it. And now we can take a look at the design by disabling the preview on everything else. And if I take this in a middle click and bake, I'm on layer one, let's try that again. Middle click and bake or right click and bake. We can move this to the side. Take a look here under shaded mode and see that it's created a some spaces on the inside with random heights. So with this, now we can move on to the next part, which is going to be to create the openings for the doors um, for the outside and then some other openings around here. So let's move on to that portion. For the openings, we want to go back to all of the rectangles that we created and moved here. And let's disable the preview on the end portion. Focus on where these overlap. And now we're going to go to region, union, because it's the same thing as Boolean union, but with 2D um, fields or 2D regions. So we'll go to geometry as the input. Notice that we have a outside curve now and we have some inside openings. These become kind of the structural members that are within the floor, but the outside curve is going to help us pick a few points where we can create some openings. So I'll go here, select this. Notice that we have as the result five different curves. We only want the one on the outside. So I'll go here to list item because I want to pick one of those five items. When I plug in all of those five items into the list, the index of zero is actually going to give me the outside curve. This is useful because now I can use that to create the points where I want the openings to go. Now. This is more of a random way of doing this. Um, 
let me show you why. Because now we're going to divide this curve, this outside curve, by, we'll say five. So there's five points that are randomly created. Let's disable preview on this so you can see it. There are five points that are spaced evenly within this polyline. And if I increase those, those will change locations. Those would be the locations where you could access the design or the structure on the inside. The reason why I say it's random is because it will place it within a even space, but that's going to land on the building in these random locations that may not be what you want, but this will show you one of the ways that we can do that. And I'll show you another one actually, because I want to show you different options to do this. We'll do this one this way. We'll create a sphere. And this is a technique because a sphere, it's equal space from a center point. So if we have equal space from a center point, then we can say, well, I want it to be 15 feet and it's going to be 15 feet one side, one side in the top. So if I say 15, then I take that sphere and I create a box around it. Well, now it's the extents, but to the outside face of the sphere. So technically we're going each, it's just a, a box that is 15. But since we're on the ground at that location, well, 10 is going to be 20 foot wide and 10 foot tall. So we can use that box in our design here, and we can do a solid difference. So I'll double click here. We'll go to solid. Sometimes I type in difference just because it's going to be solid difference. We'll be using the outside form as A, and we're going to use the boxes that we created around the spheres as B reps B. Now we can disable the preview on everything, including the boxes, and you see that we've created openings within the building that are 10 by 10 or are 10 height and 20 on each side because the sphere kind of creates that shape. We can move it up to create higher, like a higher um, window and door head. But the idea here is that you can increase the number of doors. So if we want 20 openings all the way around the outside, we could do that. So this is one option that we could do. The other option is taking this polyline, so I'll disable the preview on the subdivisions, and rather than creating the, uh, the openings randomly, we can explode all of these little line segments now we can go here, segments, vertices. So the segments are going to be the line segments. Vertices are going to be the points. These line segments, we can divide and we get the midpoint. And now this, where the midpoint is, that can be a location where we can create an opening. So if we go here to these points and we go to item, or a list item. We can also know which number we want to pick by going to point list. We'll change the size. The size is a little small. We'll go to 3.5. So now we know which one we have Let's see, more than 30, 39 points, zero to 39. So we have 40 points. Now what we can do is go to list item and see which ones we want. So we want 11. So if we want create a panel, 
Right click, go to multi-line data, and use this as the input. So now we're doing 11, 15, and then 30. And then 26. And rather than using, so I'm bringing all of this back here. And so rather than bringing in random points that are evenly spaced, we can just use these 11, 15, 30, and 26, which are organized here. And we can use those items as the base of where the spheres are located with the doors. Now we can preview and see that they're exactly in the center at those locations. And we can change the size to be random. Let's see the size of this. So this could be a random size that we can change. We can also open changes to a bigger size here. So let's say, oh, I want an opening on eight. Two, four, six, and eight. So let's go here. Two, four, six, and eight. Too big, the opening, so. So that is the power of how we can create the openings here and lastly we're going to be creating random openings throughout the building that are not necessarily here on the floor that would be up here um, somewhere so let's go ahead and create that um, at this point i'm going to disable the preview on this information and also have this as an option because this, these points can go into this base point here. Um, cool. Let's move on to that next portion. This portion, we're going to create random points throughout this structure to create openings. So what we're going to do is go to that last result, or we could even go a little bit before, before we did the, Boolean difference or the uh, solid subtraction. Now we can take this and create a box around it. So I'll go here to box. And what it does is whatever you put inside of it, it will create a bounding box to the exact exterior of it. Now we can take this and we're going to populate this with random points. So we'll take this, we'll go to populate geometry. This will fill this entire box with random points. Now those points is where those uh, spheres and boxes will be created. So we don't need that many. We probably need something like 15 or so. And so what we can do is disable the preview on that box and now go to a portion of the design that we had already created and reuse it. So it's going to be here using random and we're going to be using a sphere now the range is going to be the count here we'll take this and go to number, we'll actually change that. The range will also change, so we'll change this here. And we'll plug this into the radius for our spheres. So that's maybe a little bit too large, so we can decrease the size, and then we can increase the number of points that we create. At this point, we'll take those spheres and plug them into a box component to create a bounding box around each sphere. 
and disable the preview on everything else. So now that we have them randomly sized and we can change the iterations using the seed portion, now we can change the size um, this. And we can subtract from the overall form that we had at the end before. So we can take this, go to solid difference, and plug in the form from before into B reps A, and now into B reps B, we're going to plug in the boxes that get subtracted. So now we can disable the preview on all of the boxes. And then take a look at the overall result here where we have openings throughout and we can change the size of those openings here. You see, see here, there's some places where maybe it's not intersecting. So as you can see, now we have the result here, which are subtracting not only the boxes for the openings, which were these. Now we have some other boxes that gets subtracted to create some random perforations. Now here, you see that this one is a little small. So this is where we can increase that small number from eight to 10. And I'm pretty sure that that's going to increase and then subtract from it. And also because the roof portion back here, set four so we can change that maybe to one same with the wall depth and let's go back to look at the overall form that we've created by disabling the preview on everything but this last component As you can see, we have a really interesting form that is pretty randomized where the boxes and the in intersections happen. And what I feel like it's one of the coolest things about this is that we can change just the seed. And get a completely different iteration of form. Same with this one. This is going to represent a randomized X and Y direction. And here, randomizing the height. So this will give us different heights. And in some instances, you see that maybe it doesn't work. Then we can go back here and change the number of points. Instead of 30, we'll go to 20. And then, or change the size here to be a different, different size. Same with the height. So let's go here back to 30. We can also randomize those points so we don't have a seed for the population here. This is where we could have a seed for where the points are located. And if some of these openings are too large, And then we can bake different iterations. So what I'll do is I'll take this, middle click and bake. And then I'll move this to the side. Kind of use my mouse to go through the space and show you what it looks like inside here. We can also do a section by typing in flipping plane, vertical,
showing you a vertical section of the form. So at the end, what I would want for the project, um, for the project, it's going to be to capture one of these views. So what you would do is you would go to the view like this, right click, capture, your file. You can capture your file, uh, your picture to a file as a PNG with um, 1920 by 1080 resolution. And you can go here into in your Grasshopper script. When, once you have it like this, you can go to file, export high resolution image, and that will, you'll be able to create a little exhibit or a little presentation where you have the script below your uh, final result. So thank you very much for being here. I hope you found this useful. Grasshopper is a little bit intimidating, but with this exercise, you'll be able to see the power of parametric design. We can create unlimited iterations of designs that have uh, these interlocking volumes with subtractions. So thank you, uh, and I hope to see you on the next one.